Number three uh, says three fair coins are tossed. The two possible outcomes for a single coin are heads and tails. Complete parts A through E. So first we're going to write out the sample space when two coins are tossed or three coins are tossed. <clears throat> so um, they're telling us that there's two possible outcomes, heads and tails. So the first flip, there's two outcomes. Second flip, two outcomes. Third flip, two outcomes. Heads or tails every time. So two to the third power or two times two times two will give us eight. So there's going to be eight outcomes. And this is how it works. Sample space. We're going to write, um, let's just first say all three of them came out to be heads. The first coin was heads. The second coin was heads. The third coin was heads. And we're going to continue in this method, but we're going to introduce one tail. So let's say the first one was heads, the second one was heads, and now the last one was tails. Or we're going to shift this tail in the middle. So we could have heads, tail in the middle, or heads. So you don't want to just say there could be uh, two heads and one tail. A lot of people think three heads, two heads and one tails, two tails, one heads, or all three tails. But you also have to consider the position. Um, so there's one tail, but it could be last, in the middle, or it could be first. And so doing that also gets all the cases with two heads. So one tail is all the different, there's three different cases. And then we can just do the opposite on the other side. Tails, tails, tails. We can get tails, tails, and then heads. We can get tails, heads, tails. And then we can get heads, tails, tails. Okay, so this gives us all the combination with uh, two heads, one tails, sorry, two tails, one head, and so forth and so on. And there's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is our sample space. Normally close it in curly bracket. Okay, so as you can see here, whenever we do a sample space or a set, it's always in curly bracket. They already have the brackets there. So just H H H H H T H T H T H H. And then T T T T T H T H T and then HTT. All right, so now we want to know the probability of no heads. Okay, so the only outcome that doesn't have an H in it is this one, and that is one out of um, eight of them. So part B, want to know the probability, I'm going to say H complement. So that means the opposite of H. So no heads. Um, that's going to be 1 out of 8 and that will not reduce. So just 1 out of 8. C. Determine the probability of at least one head. So that means one or more. So we'll say the probability H, I'm trying to use H for number of heads greater than or equal to one. So that's what at least one means. So the ones that have at least one head, this one, this one, this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one or more, there's seven out of eight. You can't see all that, but I was counting those four and these three. This is the only one that doesn't have a head in it. So you still got to refer back to that sample space that you created in part one. Seven out of eight. D, the probability of no more than two heads. So no more than two heads. H is going to be less than or equal to two. So two or less. So how many of them have two or less? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So even this one is less than two heads because it has none. So all of them except for this one. So again, this one is going to be seven out of eight. And then 
one more part, the probability of exactly three heads. So exactly three heads, there's one with exactly three out of eight. So remember, probability part on top, whole on the bottom. And all we have to do is count once we have our sample space.